I'm Paula Forrester and welcome to the Grey Gardens First Seance. I'm a professional medium, but in addition to being a medium, I've been a publicist in New York City for many, many, many years. For a few, few people I'd like to thank before I begin is, first of all, Walter Newkirk, who provided me with a letter that e little Edie Beal wrote to Walter many years ago and uh, he sent it to me so that I can work off the energy of um, little Edie Beal. I've also got her magnifying glass because I wear eyeglasses and I can't see a thing without them so I'm going to need them too. And if you're asking me questions on Facebook Live I won't be able to answer them because I can't see them. I brought some props here today. Um, I have the Grey Gardens, some of the Grey Gardens videos, the original. I have that summer, which I really enjoyed. And I have the HBO movie. I've also got some newspapers here. Some cat food cans. Some vintage sheet music. All things that I know that the lovely ladies would love to uh, be around and uh, connect to. So we're going to try to connect to them today. I'd like to explain a little bit about what I do. I'd also like to give a shout out to Tanya, who's been very helpful. And I did get the opportunity with Lois, who was also very helpful. So a shout out to her. Um, when I do medium work, I speak in my own voice, and the tapestry behind me, though you can't see it very well, is a zodiac tapestry, and I know that little Edie Beale was very much into the zodiac, so hopefully that will help to lure them to be able to speak with us tonight. Um, a little bit of what I do is I speak in my own voice. What I do is I will ask spirit to be with me. I have cleansed this room with sage and holy water to make sure that it is protected against anything that malicious that might be around. I speak in my own voice. I ask them questions and should they decide to come through, they will answer me in my mind and I will relay that message in my own voice. I don't pretend to speak in accents. I don't go down that route. So why don't we begin? Why don't we see what they have to say? Because strange things have been happening to me in my apartment all day long. I've been having technical issues. I've been having lights flickering. So I do believe that they are around and they are ready to speak. But the first messages I'm getting is from uh, Big Edie Beal. And Big Edie Beal is saying to me, I've always returned to my home and that is where my heaven is, is in my home. The music is still in the walls and that is where I will always remain. It is my home. I will always remain there and I will always sing. I will be an actress and a singer and a dancer. And that is what I enjoy and that is what I love. Now one of the questions I got previous to the seance is a question of um, did little Edie Beale like Drew Barrymore portrayal in the HBO movie and let's ask her that. Let's see if she'll answer me. She's saying no, absolutely not. She couldn't sing, she couldn't dance, and I could. I was the actress, I was the singer. She portrayed me in an incorrect way. And she did not like it. She would have liked to portray herself. And little Edie Beale is also right now on a beach somewhere. And she is saying, don't you love my beautiful long hair? I have my hair and it's beautiful and it's long and I'm enjoying singing and dancing on the beach and swimming in the waves 
because after her mother died, little Lady Beale became quite the bon vivant. And she says she has some secrets and some mysteries that she would like to talk about. Because little, Be little Edie Beale is still the performer. And would like to perform for you tonight, even if it's just through messages. But let's look at a picture of Big Edie Beale. Which I have the back on the back of the CD. And let's see if I can get some messages from her. She is singing T for Two and Two for T. T for Two and Two for T and me for you and you for me. Oh, can't you see how happy we will be? She says she loves Grey Gardens. And she is still there. So whoever is living there may be dealing with some haunting issues. A big giddy deal because there is music, she says, in the walls. Just like the raccoons came and gone from the walls of Great Gardens, so does Big Giddy Beal. And she says... She's talking about Little Edie. And she's saying, you know, I had to get them away, her away from those married men. I had to bring her home. She was very, very sick. And I had to take care of her. And Little Edie is saying, oh, Mother, stop. That is ancient history. We don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to talk about that. And Big Edie is saying, I know everything about sex. I was taught very young. I was taught very, very young by Jack Fouvier. The ways of sex, so I knew how to handle things. And little lady was in trouble when she came back to Grey Gardens. And Big Edie is saying, we found a special doctor to take care of her, to take care of things. And that was a secret that was kept with them till their dying days. Little Edie was quite the fashion icon. And she's saying many people have copied my fashion and my design. And she's proud of that. She's proud of the fashion that came of Little Lady Beale. And Little Lady Beale is saying, Cap. Cap. It was all Cap. But Mother would not let me contact him. And that's how we got into trouble. And that is why I was sick. But the special doctor came and helped me. The special doctor came. Now this letter that was sent to me by Walter Newkirk, kindly, who is the expert on Grey Gardens. I've only been used to Grey Gardens for the last couple of months. Walter turned me on to it. And ever since then I've been watching everything I can about Grey Gardens with a fascination for the, uh, for the Beatles. And she talks about being afraid of the hurricanes in East Hampton and how they refused to evacuate their home 
even though the neighborhood was evacuated. And Dick Eady is saying, how dare they come into my home? How dare they hose down my home? How dare they break through our silence, through our happiness? We were together and we were happy. And little Edie Beale is saying, Mother darling, I always wanted to go to the city. I would have taken anywhere in the city to go to. And it's very sad because there's a sadness about her. And she's looking at my astrological chart. And I know you can't see it, but it's a large tapestry of the zodiac. And little Yitty Beale says, David was the perfect man for me. I love David. He made me into a star. It took that many years for me to be a star, but I became a star. And one day, after my mother's passing, I was finally free. Because yes, Tanya, she was staunch. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. Staunch. And she let Grey Gardens go. And she says, it's the first time I had a life. I traveled the world. I met up with many men. And the gay men loved me. I went to many parties. I dressed in gold lame. They loved me. Walter went with me to these parties. And I was the toast of the town. And I still am. Because even after my death, I am finally, finally, a star. I believe what Big Edie was alluding to, or inferring rather, is that little Edie got pregnant. And they called the special doctor in East Hampton to take care of things. And he did. Because there was no room in Grey Gardens for an infant. But she was staunch. She lived through it. But she became ill afterwards. She became ill afterwards, and that's where her mother had to take care of her. The mother is saying, I loved Lee. Lee was the one that really got them out of trouble. Yes, it was Jackie's money, but Lee was the one that was there. And Lee was the one that put the house together so they could stay there. And she wants to thank Lee for all of her efforts. And Big Edie is saying, I loved Lois. She painted us, you know. She did wonderful paintings of us as she lives at Grey Gardens. And she, her, she read our poems, and she particularly went for the mercury finger, which is the finger of communication, which is the finger of their, their staunch character. 
their roles in life. So she loved having Lois at the house. So she wants to thank Lois for being there and for spending the time with them and reading their palms and bringing some magic into the household. Bringing some magic into the household. But little Lady is fascinated by my uh, Zodiac tapestry. And she's saying, the perfect man for me, the perfect man for me, the perfect man for me was David. I love David. He gave me back my life. And now little Lady is on a beach with her long flowy blonde hair and she's happy. She's happy to be a part of the beach and of the sunlight and the bathing suits and the people that flocked around her. They're saying they miss their cats. Some of the cats are with them and some of the raccoons because animals have spirits too. So each one is surrounded by the cats. Each one is surrounded by the animal spirits that they valued so much in their lifetimes. Little Edie is saying I love the musical because the actors could actually sing and dance. And Little Edie is saying I could sing and dance. I was the star. I was always the star. Mother said she was the star, but I was the star. Is she topless on the beach? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. She flaunted her character. She flaunted her beauty. She found herself as stylish, which she was. She was a pioneer in the world of style. So she said, yes, absolutely yes. I pioneered topless on the beaches because I was stealth and I didn't care. One question that was submitted to me was, did Jerry Torrey live at the house? So let's ask Edie. Let's feel her energy coming through. I did not trust that man. I wanted to leave when he came. He was a handyman and he came and visited. He did not live at the house. She said a few nights when he worked late he would sleep on a cot at the house. But he never lived there. He came around to help from the neighbors up the road. They sent two boys over and he was one of them. To help the Beals to see if they needed any help. But Jerry came with his bicycle and would spend a night or two here and there on a cot. But he never lived there. Lois lived there, she sang, adamantly. It was Lois. Lois lived there. I kept my fur coat all those years because it reminded me of the day I could have been a star. But she couldn't be a star because something happened with Cap and she needed medical attention. 
she needed medical attention because of that, and they refused to contact Cap to tell him what was going on. Jackie Kennedy Onassis, the Bouvier family. Big Edie is saying, she was not my favorite niece. She came because of the newspaper articles and she was embarrassed. She put money into the household for her own name, but they could have sent more. There were nights where they were so cold, so very cold, with no power, with no running water, with no way to wash. And Big Edie is saying there were bugs that would bite her in her bed. And she was covered in bite marks, which hurt her quite a bit. But she was practically homebound, except for the rolling chair. The rolling chair. The rolling chair. That is how she got around. No, it was not public information. In those days, people did not talk about that. It was Lee that put the house together. It was Lee and little Edie that pulled the house together. Little Edie is laughing about all the cat food cans that were everywhere. She's saying, I had nowhere else to put them. Where should I put them? We loved our cats. We loved the raccoons. They were like dogs in the house. She didn't care. It was basically fuck East Hampton. We're going to stay and we're going to do what we want. We did not want to move to Florida. We wanted to stay at Grey Gardens. Grey Gardens is our home. The rolling chair is with the family. They kept it as memorabilia. And also I must give a shout out that Walter Newkirk wrote a book called Memorabilia with his letters and photos of Little Edie. And he is coming out with a 10th anniversary special edition of the book coming out sometime soon. So be sure to watch for that. So we know she did not like Drew Barrymore's portrayal of her. She said she was okay when I was younger, but when I was older, I was not like that. I could sing, I could dance. I was a performer, I was a star. I was a star of Grey Gardens, a movie. And that launched my career. People are now fascinated with me and with mother. That summer. Very interesting movie. Very interesting movie. The people at East Hampton hated us. They didn't want us there. We were not their upper crust people that they were used to having. I had trouble going down to the beach without being harassed. It was very sad. She kept to the house. She kept to the home. But after her mother passed, little Edie is saying, I was free to be a star. And I was a star. I was a star in my own right. I wore a gold lame headdress. 
I went to the finest parties and drank champagne. I was little Edie Beale, the star, the dancer, the actress. And Dick Edie is saying, oh Edie, you're always talking like that. But it's true. It's definitely true. Let's go back to little lady for a moment, because she has more to say. Very intelligent woman, if you read her letters. All she wanted was to be recognized on her own, not as a daughter of her mother, but as a star of her own right, which she became after the release of the movie. She had no idea how strongly the movie would affect people and how far it would go and how many of you love her and her mother. Another question, which is a difficult one, which I will try to ask Big Edie and Little Edie, is why were they not buried together in East Hampton? So let's ask Big Edie. Let me get a picture of her out. Actually, Little Edie, because that was her decision. I slept left next to her long enough. I slept next to her all of those years. I love my mother, but I did not want to sleep next to her into eternity. When people came to visit, I wanted them to come to see me. Not both of us. They could see us independently. And that is why she chose not to be buried next to her mother. Little Edie is saying to all of you, take your staunch. Take your power. Be independent. I'm out on a limb doing this. Take chances, dance, be happy. I finally have my flowy hair back and it is blowing in the wind in a beautiful beach and I am happy and I am surrounded by men and I am happy with that. So they are there and they are happy. Big Edie remains in the walls of Grey Gardens. She sings there. It was her house of music. She sang, I needed the music to survive like air, like breathing, like breathing the air. I needed the music. So to this day, I remain at Grey Gardens. No matter how they've changed it, no matter who is living there, I am there. T for two and two for T, me for you and you for me. Oh, can you see how happy we will be? A family, a boy for you, a girl for me. Oh, can't you see how happy we will be?
I'm sorry, I can't sing. But I'm singing with Biggie D is singing. And her record collection, which she loves so much. She wants to talk about Gould. She loved Gould very much. And it broke her heart when he had to leave. She was saying, is saying, that there was more to their relationship than met the eye. She and Gould loved each other as a man and woman would love each other. And that's what broke her heart when he had to leave. And he never came back. My sons are worthless. They could have helped us more. The winters were so long and so cold. We would have to stuff newspaper into the mattresses to get them to stay up. And there were bugs in the beds. And we were bitten all the time. And I was bedridden most of the time. So they bit me. And Jerry did offer to help them with that, but they never did it. They never did it. She's saying the Marseille brothers saved us. They saved us. They gave us the attention that the Bouviers were supposed to have. And they made us into stars. And everything you want to know about them is in the movie. But they do have their secrets. Her interaction with Blackjack Bouvier, who taught her everything about sex, take that for what it means. Little Edie getting into trouble and a doctor having to come and help her through these problems. Wait, they're talking now. They're talking amongst themselves. They're saying we are happy now. We are happy. Little Lady travels the world still, performing, singing, dancing. She's saying I'm stealth. I will always be around. And I will always be around all of you. And I am happy that you remember me. I am happy that you are there for me. Because I love you too. And no, I was not schizophrenic. I was bright. And I was brass. And I wouldn't take any trouble from anyone even when they came to throw us out of our own home. It was me that saved the house. It was me. She did not want a child. She did not want a child. It would have interrupted her career because she was planning on going from Grey Gardens at any moment. She needed to take care of her mother. And her mother needed to take care of her. It was a very symbiotic relationship.
Oh, Edie, tell them about the raccoons. And Edie is saying, they were our pets. And I screamed when they took them out in cages. They were our little dogs and we would feed them bread and droppings from the table. And mother loved her pate and would eat that. And there were days when we had no food, but we made sure the animals ate because we loved our animals so much. And toward the end, Whiskers was her favorite. And Whiskers ran away for a while and came back, much like little Edie did. So I think Whiskers reminded her of her daughter. And no, Big Edie did not keep Little Lady captive in the house. It was Little Lady's choice. And she would sing and she would dance and she would model clothing and she would make up wardrobes that are copied today. And she sang, I was ahead of my time. So understand that. We could not raise a family in Grey Gardens. And yes, it was Cap. It was Cap that got little Edie into trouble. And that's why she remained in Grey Gardens all those years. She was sick afterwards and she was embarrassed. And she stayed with her mother. And Big Edie is saying, no, I fell from my rolling chair. I went to get up and I fell. Little Edie never pushed me. Little Edie was nothing but kind. Sometimes it took a while to get her attention, but she always did what I needed. And they do occasionally meet up on the other side. They do the soft shoe together. Because Big Edie is presenting herself as being in her 40s again and enjoying the social light parties and sitting on the piano as Gould would play and singing for her audience because those are the happiest memories of my life. Yes, Cap's wife did know about little Edie. She did, and that's why they could not contact him anymore. Even when Edie was in trouble. So they took care of it themselves. So the Beal ladies are overwhelmed by the amount of attention that they still get on Facebook, through movies, through documentaries, through Tanya's book that is about to come out, to Walter Newkirk's 10th anniversary book that is going to come out, Memorabilia. They're still fashionable and they're still interesting. So, 
that is what they have to say. And they say, keep a song in your heart and be still. S-T-E-A-L-T-H, stealth. Be a stealth woman. And you will go far. Because it took her until late in life to be a star. But you know what? She did it. And she still is. So for all of you out there, Thank you for watching. Like I said, I'm a professional medium. I also read tarot. I do do private readings. I have a website. It's talkingwithheaven.com. You might want to check that out. It tells you all about me and my background. I met Walter when we worked together in publicity at one of the big publicity firms in Manhattan. And that is how I know Walter. And I would say Walter is pretty much an expert on Grey Gardens. And Lois asked me to call her the day after tonight to tell her what was said because she doesn't do internet. And she doesn't listen to those kinds of things. So, I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in. I'd like to give some time to Tanya and her giveaway. I hope somebody great wins. It's a wonderful prize. Thank you, Tanya, for your words of encouragement in doing this. I think I'm going to start a series called Celebrity Seance. And the next one is going to be Jonathan Frid, who played Barnabas Collins on Dark Shadows. And there is a room in Holly, Pennsylvania, in 1942, where Judy Garland and Mae West checked in together into the same small hotel room. So I'm going to be spending the night in that room and doing a live broadcast from there. And uh, we'll keep this going. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Mm -hmm. It was my pleasure to be with you and have a wonderful Grey Gardens night. Good night.